Hello and welcome to the Nitro Quiver series. Um, my name is Tommy DeLago and I want to show you what we have been cooking up for you. Uh, it's, I don't want to say working on Nitro snowboard shapes uh, is not fun, but quiver boards are always something special to me. Um, it always gives us more freedom to think up new ideas and do something that's maybe out of the box. Maybe it takes a little bit of explaining and I think mostly takes just trying it out. So first thing I want to say is whenever you get a chance to try any of these boards, do it because they may look like they're not your board, but eventually they really are. So um, just open your mind and uh, um, get with me on the quiver series. I just want to run through the whole line relatively quickly. And if you want to find out anything more about any of these boards in detail, just click on any of the videos below that explain every single model in more detail than what I'm doing right now. The idea behind the quivers is, like I said, to try out new things, try out odd ideas, also give some room to ideas that come from riders, predominantly, of course, Brian Fox, who's helped a lot in you know, conceiving these boards. Uh, it just gives us more freedom, so you see something that looks a little familiar and something that looks completely weird. So um, just take a look at what we have. Starting out over here with the fin twin. The fin twin is a short, um, kind of a pintail powder board that is mainly designed for riding trees, lighting, you know, very close terrain, complicated terrain. Uh, it works really, really well in the slush in the springtime. It's a really fun board. Uh, it's not made for high speed. It's just made to kick around and to throw it around in tight turns. Uh, has a lot of taper, so it's quite a bit narrower in the tail, wider in the nose, gives you a lot of flotation, and it's just super quick around turns, around rocks, couloirs, trees, whatever you want to throw at it. Um, a new addition in the quiver this year is the dinghy. The dinghy is a board that Brian wanted to do. It's a short board, it's a 155, and it's pretty wide. It's not a wide board like the POW, which is also relatively uh, short, but it is an all mountain board. So it's just a, got a slight taper to it, got side cut. It's really an all mountain directional shape, but wide and short. Why wide and short? Again, it makes the board very maneuverable in tight situations, but the extra width gives it flotation when you hit the powder, when you hit difficult terrain, when it's cruddy, when it's you know, not so smooth. A wider board just gives you more stability. Then the Banker. The Banker is really my personal favorite board. That's pretty much the board I've been riding most of the time the last couple of years. The initial idea came from the concept of making a cool new board built around bank slalom, which means fast speed, turning, carving, but also a certain amount of forgiveness. You, you know, in, the, in a bank slalom situation, it's different than racing because you're, you know, you got terrain to deal with. You need a board that's forgiving in the nose area that doesn't catch an edge, even if, you know, the runs rutted. So that's where the idea came from. What we ended up with is a super versatile all mountain board. Works amazingly good in the powder. Works really, really good on hard pack, on the groomers. So it carves well and gives you flotation on the, in the pow. And I think most important for me anyways, is that it does all of that without stressing you out. I don't want to be stressed out with my board. I just want to have a good time. I want a board that's there for me when I look for it, when I want it to be there, and that gives me the, the, the feedback that I want, but I don't want to stress out and be always nervous, like, what is this board doing? So this is a super smooth board that really takes you to any sort of terrain. The Banker comes in a variety of sizes. Then two iconic models in the quiver line that you probably have seen um, from the days of, you know, guys like Marcus Keller taking it into the half pipe to Zeb Powell doing all kinds of tricks. There's, you know, been a lot of good riders on these boards. The Cannon comes in a small 73 size and a slightly bigger 203, which is, of course, not only designed for the big tall guys, it's just a big board that people really want to ride. It's kind of funny, when we first prototyped that board, we went up on the glacier in the summertime, and my, at that point, I think he was 10 or 11, my son, he went with us, and that's the board he wanted to ride the most. So it's a board you can really ride. Anybody can ride it, you know, as soon as you have a certain know-how, like, you know, a certain knowledge on snowboarding. 
um, you can ride that board. So again, don't be intimidated by these boards. Don't be intimidated by the size. If you get a chance, try it out. Um, Canon, of course, is made for powder, but again, you've seen it in half pipe. You've seen it on the park. You can do pretty much anything you want with this. You can do amazing butter tricks with this board if you really put your mind to it. Um, then um, a model that has been there, but is completely overhauled, completely new, the Slash. The Slash is, the name says it all, it's our slasher. It's the board that's, you know, made for surfing. It's a really, you know, a board that is built around soft snow riding, whether it's slush, whether it's pow, it's like, you know, slashing the little snow banks on your cat tracks in the springtime, like in the powder. It's, it's just a fun board that you really want to ride in soft conditions predominantly. What we did this year, we gave the board a 3D shape in the base. Essentially, the board starts with a convex bottom in the nose area and kind of moves towards a concave bottom in the tail. So it's actually surfy and forgiving in the front. And as it moves towards the tail, it actually does the opposite. It gives you a lot of hold in the edge of the, especially the tail on the edge, allowing you to carve and keep that edge in the snow. So it's not like a washy-washy, uncontrollable board. It's very, very reliable and controllable. Also comes in a split version. Um, to give you that surf sensation also when you're, you know, earning your turns yourself. And then last but not least, the POW. It looks a little strange because it has these winglets in the back, which is kind of a design cue that was taken from late 70s surfboard styles. Um, what these do for you, essentially you have a board that is really wide in the nose, kind of narrow in the tail. What we wanted, we wanted a swallow tail that sinks even more. So a swallowtail, what it does for you, it reduces the surface of the board and sinks your tail, brings up your nose, and gives you a more balanced stance on your powder turns. And the winglets reduce the size and the surface area of the tail even more, allowing it to sink more. At the same time, it has a progressive side cut, so it has a pretty sharp radius turn at the end of the side cut, which gives you more edge control. So it's a board that takes you to the powder turns it takes you through those steep traverses, icy traverses, and you still have control, which is always important on a, on a board that has that much taper. So it looks weird. It looks a little bit out of the norm, but it's extremely functional. Once again, try it out. That's the quivers. Like I said in the very beginning, click at the bottom images to see which one you like best and find out more about them. And most of the foremost, Try them out on the snow whenever you can. Thanks for watching.